Okay, we're about to start our mat motor build. Um, here we have a brand new motor. It was one that I um, scored from my place of employment during our shop shift. Um, this is actually out of a 12 volt boat winch which um, didn't work and was returned and um, it actually costs less to throw the whole thing in the bin than to send it back to uh, China and get a replacement. So um, I rescued this one and luckily the motor was fine. It was just the uh, switching gear uh, for forward and reverse. One of the relays um, was no good, it was open circuit and uh, that is why it didn't work. So um, we've stripped it all down. Now it's not um, as big as the Razor scooter motors they're using. I think those ones that uh, Matt uses is 400 watts. This is 250 watts. It is smaller, but um, there's absolutely no reason why it will not work and do the same thing. So um, what we want to do is build this thing and find out why it's sending current back to the battery, um, which will not be as the uh, coils become open. Um, which is when the brush leaves the segment that is uh, connected to the coils um, and causes lots of sparking at the brushes because the flyback um, is arcing between the commutator segment and the brush so um, most of the flyback is going to be dissipated as heat and um, sparks and bits and pieces of brush getting blown away um, and the current simply cannot flow back to the battery because the brush has left the uh, segment that the coils hooked onto so um, it's definitely not the flyback but um, and the uh, flyback of course will continue the current will continue to flow in the same direction which would mean that it's sending a positive current back to the negative side of the battery because uh, when your coil becomes open, of course the voltage inverts across the coil, but the current continues to flow in the same direction. So it would seem to me that the current being sent back to the battery um, is produced just as the brushes come in contact with the armature segment that the coils are wound on. So, um, but that shouldn't be the case either because the back EMF is always less than the applied voltage so for it to be more the motor would have to be spinning faster so um, we'll have to see what's going on there and we're going to do that by adding somehow a second set of brushes in here um, so we can see exactly what is across the coil before it comes in contact with the uh, two source brushes or the two brushes that uh, are hooked to the wires that go to the battery which of course is your source so that's the plan there so our um, rotor is all stripped clean as um, it's got some sort of plastic coating on here to protect it from the uh, steel laminates so it shouldn't cut the wire hopefully we will have to take care when we're doing this because it's not really that good but it is fairly thick. Sorry about my uh, black cracked fingers that uh, the joys of being a mechanic. Um, so yeah, we managed to get all the wire off, no broken tabs, um, which is not a problem anyway. If they break when we uh, fold them back up, we just solder them on. That's no drama. It's nice clean copper. Flux core solder will do the job. So uh, that's the plan wind it in um, the fashion that Matt wound his or winds his and um, add a second set of brushes here so we can see exactly what's going on um, before the coil comes in contact with the dry brushes um, having those second set of brushes we'll be able to see what the voltage is across our two coils and if it is greater uh, supply voltage 
then we'll know why it's sending current back to the battery. Uh, so the next thing we've got to do is get some wire to do the job and that's what this part here is for. Um, this is the stator out of a uh, Fisher & Paykel Smart Drive washing machine engine. Um, every time it's throw out day around this area and uh, areas close I go on the hunt for these things because they are an excellent source of wire. Um, depending on what series you've got will depend on wire size. Um, this here is a 60 series so it's 0.6 mil wire and uh, that is just the stuff we want for the job. Well that's it for this video. Uh, just one showing the plan here and now we just got to make it happen. The hardest bit about this whole job is going to be getting these second set of brushes on here. So I may have to make up a new carrier plate because that's uh, missing the bits where we want to pin the brushes on. So um, nonetheless we'll get the job done. We've got to get them in a position where they miss these ones but uh, we're close enough to give us an indication of uh, what's going on across the coil just before contact and of course if we spin the motor the other way we'll be able to see what's going on just after contact which would be um, the large inductive kickback you would get um, if you had a second set of brushes but you will not get with a single set of brushes um, just lots of sparks and arcs and a great way to burn your brushes out. But um, we'll see. I could be wrong. But it um, doesn't make any sense that you can send the inductive kickback from the coils on the motor back to the battery if the brushes aren't touching the segment that the coils are joined onto. Which is why you get the big arcs because the uh, inductive kickback happens just as the uh, brush leaves that segment that's hooked to the coil you get a high voltage and so you get an arc across the little gap but uh, all to come let's get down to uh, business and see what's going on and see if there's any magic in this uh, U-Butte mat motor thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next video when we'll have this all wound um, and the next set of brushes put on and then we'll fire it up and uh, chuck it on the scope <clears throat> probably that one I'll use my old scope and not my new scope in case we blow something up and uh, we'll get it all up and run and see what happens first I've got to get the wire off of here which is quite easy uh, it's a three-phase motor so the wire peels off every third one and then you go around and do the next lot so uh, great source for wire but um, I'm not too sure the guys in the US of A are finding it very hard to find these motors perhaps they're um, only Australian I don't know <clears throat> okay we'll see you next video thanks for watching guys